Hey, appreciate all of your questions on the last YouTube video, episode five, about the uh, Staccato P here to answer some of the questions. And um, also, I uh, got some clarification from the factory on some of the parts uh, that I was looking at. Uh, every single part of this gun is uh, tool steel, machine steel. Uh, there's no cast, MIM, um, none of that other stuff where you see, because um, the, the the price point cutting, um, the 1911 is a very, and 2011, same thing really, is a very expensive uh, format to manufacture because so many of the parts are intricately shaped and they originally used to be forgings that were machined. And the uh, question keeps coming up, how is the STI able to make that price point of 1999 retail and uh, where are they hiding it? Well, I've cracked it all open and uh, I don't know, um, you know, honestly, where, where they might be cutting any corners, honestly, uh, because all the parts are super nice uh, machine steel components. So there are uh, no, no cost cutting measures that you normally see in guns that are around the $1,500 price point for a 1911. And uh, we talked about some of the, the midline um, Springfields and the, the, the higher tier Colts, which are around 1500 bucks. Uh, they have uh, some cast parts and some MIM metal injection molded components. There are none of those here. And in fact, STI factory, uh, any of the guns that used to have those parts, uh, there's still a pool of those parts sitting at the factory. They put them all aside and the Staccato P has all uh, machined internal. So super high quality. Also something I didn't really highlight, I don't think enough um, for perhaps those newer to this type of platform is that the slide to frame and barrel fit, that's all uh, machined and hand fit versus uh, the other guns that I talked about before that are production level at around 14, 1500 bucks. Those parts are assembled without any specific fitting other than maybe a couple high spots. They are not specifically machined together so that you're getting this kind of uh, bank vault fit up. All right, so that's that's real important distinction I wanted to kind of drive home. One of the other questions that comes up is, hey man, is this thing really big, the, the Staccato P, is it really big? And what's the trigger reach? I have small hands, I have small hands too. Uh, if you can shoot a Glock 17, uh, such as this one, you can reach the trigger, you can get your fingers around it and reach the controls. You can also shoot an STI, it's not that big a deal. The difference in the circumference right around here where um, you're grabbing underneath the uh, trigger guard is uh, so close between the two guns and also the reach from the back of the tang to the face of the trigger is uh, They're so close in the measurement. So here just a quick look here. Let me center myself up So I'll reach get my fingers I can get my fingers to touch and also look where my index finger is and let's do that real quick here Fingers can touch I'm still reaching the trigger so some of the things that I think are important for um, how successful these STIs have been out in the market. And again, specifically, we're talking about the new lines and uh, the Staccato P and the P Duo, which is the optic ready one. Those are the ones that are really going out and making the splash that you guys are, are following. So if you had one of the previous ones, the Edge or the Tactical 5.0, those are all null and void because the, some of the stuff I talked about, about the internals, those don't even apply to those guns. So we're only talking about these. So if someone's um, talking trash about uh, whatever guns from before, I had plenty to, to say about the older guns too, um, but that's not what we're here for. All right, so specifically this one that I've got in my hand. Uh, one of the things that works in the favor of you as a new owner of one of these STIs uh, would be that um, you know, you're, you're using uh, STI brand magazines and the gun is only made by and worked on by STI. So unlike a lot of the other ones where oh, I got to send, uh, get uh, stock such and such gun, I got to send it to here, send it to there, what magazines do I use? All of that's removed. And what I liken it to as far as uh, improving your success rate is when you buy a Glock, you get a Glock magazine and I know there's other aftermarket ones but if you're using the Glock magazine in your Glock uh, with decent quality ammo you can expect a certain level of results same thing with the STI you're getting if you buy one brand new from the factory and you're using brand new Gen 2 factory magazines um, you you have a certain success rate that you can expect so 
uh, that, that's my thoughts on you know, being successful with the thing from the get-go. All right, so uh, this next section, just a short little PSA uh, for any of you new 2011 owners who perhaps may not have owned anything but a Glock prior to that. And it's a manual of arms thing. When you're shooting a Glock and you're finished with it and it's empty, you just drop the slide, not a big deal. However, if you have your 2011, don't drop the slide on an empty chamber. You Google this because you don't believe me for some reason. I don't know why you're watching my YouTube channel if you don't want to believe what I'm telling you about 1911s and their relatives. But uh, drop the slide, ease it forward, don't drop it on an empty chamber to make it the shortest possible. That awesome trigger press that you paid top dollar for um, is so awesome because there's only about 20 thousandths of an inch of engagement uh, so that you get that really clean break and it's a super clean, basically like a knife edge on a knife edge. Um, it's a totally safe engagement, obviously well tested in, in over 100 years of production, but this is a highly tuned uh, surface engagement. So. Um, when you drop the slide where it's not cushioned uh, by uh, an incoming round that the, the slide is feeding and that the trigger is free to bounce around versus having had your finger press it to the rear as the gun is cycling, do the mental math on how that the differs when you're shooting and the gun cycling versus if you just drop the slide on an empty chamber. Uh, eventually you will uh, probably uh, above average likelihood that you'll incur some type of issue with your trigger, uh, trigger job where the trigger may not be crisp anymore, be mushy, uh, could create an issue where after you drop the slide, you realize that the hammer, let me get this to a spot where you can see it. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, the hammer drops to half cock, it, it follows, it follows the slide down. So it's not a Glock, so don't treat it like one. All right, some closing thoughts on the uh, STI for, for this week. What are my thoughts on it so far? Well, I, I like being able to monkey around with the, the whole bottom half of the gun here. You can see um, that I've got a whole new uh, grip frame that I put on there. I did some texturing on there. I have a prototype 10.8 mag catch. Got a flat trigger. This is one of the STI um, gunsmith blanks that I flattened. And uh, oops, go fix that hammer there. Anyway, I really enjoying shooting and handling the gun and uh, working with it. If you are a diehard 1911 guy and uh, you've been shooting one for a while and you go to a lot of training courses and you realize everyone around you is shooting a Glock and uh, you're tired of dragging six, eight magazines up to the line, or maybe uh, uh, maybe you're, you're if you've been following me for a while, you probably are, are getting. Um, you're not getting any younger, and maybe your elbows and your wrists are getting a little, little fatigued shooting uh, 45. Um, whatever, whatever the things are, uh, I find at least my first impressions, and when people are asking me about the, you know, the 2011, uh, specifically the STI in, the, in this case here, uh, I think it's a, a nice um, evolution for a 1911 guy who wants to move into a, a modern capacity gun. Uh, you know, double column, uh, nice low recoiling gun, especially if you've, you've taken a beating like I have from decades of shooting full power 45 and just, just shooting a lot, uh, you get pretty beat up and worn down. So the, the days of being all macho with full power 230 grain ball, I, I'm past that. I've been there, gotten the t-shirt, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I'm good with a gun that barely recoils and uh, just has a <laughs> nice, light recoil spring and just easy to shoot. So I'm really enjoying it right now and uh, we'll crank some more rounds through this thing and, and keep learning, keep developing, and uh, let's see what we get. All right, usual section here at the end, uh, paying the bills. Check out the links below in the description for uh, discount codes from my friends. And uh, also check out the training section of the website if you wanna come train with me. Um, I have a bunch of local classes in South Florida, just posted uh, to the site a bunch of law enforcement specific classes uh, at the Coral Springs PD range and, um, and also starting to get people uh, filling in for the 1911 slash 2011 uh, performance classes, uh, one day format, got one in December and one 
after December. So uh, come on out and train with me and, uh, and trade notes and shoot our, shoot our 1911s and enjoy the Florida sun. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. We'll see you next time.